Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. The other evening I came across a camera for sale online and it was a name that I'd never heard of before, but it looked incredibly familiar and I was immediately intrigued. This led to a last minute, four hour round trip to go pick this up. It's a camera that I'm very excited about. It is the Rittrek Review 6x6 medium format SLR with the very intriguing 80mm f2 lens. In this video today, I'm gonna to share some information about this camera as well as my experience shooting with it the first time and talk about if it's something that I'm going to hang on to and get fixed up. So I'm probably gonna fail pronouncing a bunch of these names today, but uh, the Rit Rack, this was released in 1968 and this was made by a company called Musashino Koki think is how you pronounce it. And then it was distributed by RITREC. And this only lasted for a year. The RITREC closed down and Narita came, picked up the camera and re-released it as the Narita 66, I think in 1971. And then this was also sold in the States, I think as the Narita Graflex. So the Narita is actually a camera that I was quite interested in for a while. Even those are quite rare and hard to find, but you know, when I first saw this online and I Googled it, I could barely find any information, let alone any of these for sale whatsoever. So this is part why I wanted to do this video as well, is just to kind of help get some information out there and some hands-on experience with the review. So what really interests me is obviously there aren't that many medium format SLRs out there in kind of the traditional SLR style. There's the Kia F60, uh, the Pentacon, Pentax 6.7, a few other more kind of obscure ones. Um, I actually own the Kiev 60. I did a review a couple years ago on the channel and I quite enjoyed working with that camera, but it was a little bit finicky. It didn't feel super solid. Uh, I had some issues with it as well and I could never decide if I wanted to get it fixed. So I actually haven't shot with it since that review. It's back here on the shelf right now. Uh, but this feels really solid, a little bit more refined, a little less bulky and it overall, just a nice camera. Uh, this is made in Japan and from what I can find online, uh, they actually get pretty decent reviews and have a good reputation. And then lens lineup, there was I think a 40, a 55, a 70 leaf shutter, and then a couple longer options. But the most intriguing lens and what makes this camera system so sought after is this one right here. So this is the Ritron 80mm f2. This was also sold as the Noritar 80mm f2 later on. And obviously what makes this so special is the speed of it. F2 lens on a medium format 6x6 SLR is very fast, pretty much unheard of, and obviously allows you to get a very shallow depth of field look. From the images I'd seen online before shooting with this, it also has just a very special look in the way that it renders its images. And this particular camera that I found is in incredibly mint condition. You know, it almost looks like it just came out of the box. I didn't even have to clean the lens before I shot with it. Uh, so that's really exciting. But there was one like standout glaring issue that I noticed right away when I went to buy this. And that is that the prism has some pretty bad desilvering running right through the center of it. And when you look through it, basically like the whole lower half is almost blacked out. So that obviously won't affect the images, but it does make shooting incredibly awkward, almost impossible. So really the goal with the first few rolls through this and with this video is A, just to shoot one to see if the camera works. And then just to also get a feel for this to see if I like it enough uh, to go and have it serviced and spend the money that it's gonna cost to hopefully get this prism resilvered. So first up is roll one, the tester roll. I might go to with any new film cameras just to do a really quick walk around my local neighborhood and shoot one roll purely to see if the camera's working. I've learned my lesson way too many times in the past that it's best to shoot one, develop it, see if the camera works before you waste any more time or film. I was happy to see after I developed the film that I did in fact have images. There were 12 of them. 
Vance spacing were just about perfect, but there was a problem on almost every single frame and that was this uneven exposure with the negatives being quite a bit more dense on the left hand side. And I was able to clean this up for the most part uh, in post, but there is obviously some sort of issue with the camera. And I'm pretty sure this has something to do with the shutter. This might be what's called shutter capping, uh, which isn't that surprising because I have no idea when this was actually used last. It definitely needs a service. But overall, you know, the images looked nice. The lens when stopped down is super sharp. The camera was really enjoyable to work with. And then the last image I shot on the roll was wide open. And this kind of gave me the first taste of what this is capable of. And as much as I hate to talk about and describe at a focus areas and lens characteristics, uh, it really does have like a dreamy look to the rendering and a bit of a glow to it. So I was very excited to see that. So back in a minute, just have to take a quick break to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Squarespace. So when it comes to building a website, what is important to me is finding something that's easy to use and is flexible for my business. And Squarespace checks all of those boxes. They have a wide range of really great looking templates to choose from, and they're easily customizable. As a photographer, I love that I can set up a gallery and then simply just click and drag to organize and rearrange my images. And then I can also easily add things like an online shop for selling things like my latest book, or even connect with third-party integrations to offer high-quality prints at the click of a button. So check out squarespace.com today for a free trial. Test it out when you're ready to launch. You can use my link below, squarespace.com slash Google to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So the second roll I shot, I decided to start with a couple quick self-portraits just to see how this lens looked, wide open from a little further away. And the one thing that became very quickly apparent is that nailing critical focus with this 80mm f2 wide open is a pretty challenging thing to do for all types of different subjects. Obviously this prism is screwed with the desilvering so that certainly doesn't help but uh, even with the, the micro prism in the middle you're kind of guessing so uh, with it being this shallow I'd be shocked if this is in focus. I will say both of the self portraits I shot were out just a tiny bit. Uh, but that being said, they did have a really cool look to them. You know, the out of focus areas almost have like a bit of a swirl to them. Next, I shot a few close up images and just like the one on the first roll, this lens does have almost a bit of a glow to it. Everything kind of melts away and it's just a very, very nice look, something I enjoy quite a bit. And then I wrapped up the evening shooting a few more images. Once again, all wide open, static subjects, little further away. And as much as I was sure that I was hitting focus with most of these using the micro prism in the center of the screen, most of these images were just out kind of ever so much focusing a bit in front of the subject. So uh, again, this goes to show kind of the necessity of some sort of critical focusing device with the RIT rack. There was a waist level finder available with a drop down, but just like with the Pentax, you know, shooting this shallow, you really need to be able to make sure that you're nailing your focus point. And then what's interesting is the last image I shot of the evening was shot at a 60th of a second. It was the slowest shutter speed I'd used yet. And that was the only frame that didn't have any of these exposure issues. So leads me to believe once again, that this is definitely some sort of shutter issue that's maybe worse at faster speeds. So after seeing these initial results, you know, obviously very excited about this camera, but again, it made me realize the importance and the necessity of having some sort of way to check critical focus when you're shooting with this 80mm f2 wide open. And as mentioned, there's a waist level finder. Not only is that hard to find, I'm sure it's also incredibly expensive when you do. But then I got thinking, you know, I have the Pentax 67. For that camera, I have the magnifier for the prism that threads on. So I pulled that off the Pentax and lo and behold, threaded on perfect to the Ritrex prism. It's almost like it was meant for this. So uh, pretty cool solution. Obviously, you know, these things, you can find them all over eBay. So if you have one of these cameras, this is definitely an option 
for checking critical focus. So pretty cool to see I already had something that solves the problem. So overall, this is a very intriguing camera to me, and I will say right now, I'll definitely be getting this repaired. I did enjoy it that much. Uh, um, I will say though, if you are interested in one of these, I would say the only downsides are First, you know, these are already quite expensive. So I've seen full kits going for like 15 to 2000 pounds, you know, just for the camera and the 80 mil F2, if not more. And personally, I don't think I would pay that price for one of these setups, even though I do really enjoy this. Uh, because the second thing is just how difficult it is to find parts. So again, if you want a different accessory or if like me, you need to find a new finder or get it repaired, it's almost impossible, so now I have to go and see if I can get someone to re-silver this instead. And also, if you ever say like broke uh, an obscure little tiny part or had to get a repair done and needed new parts, you know, it could be almost impossible to find specific things. So just something to keep in mind if you wanna get into one of these setups. I think they're just things you have to consider and accept if you're gonna shoot with one of these. But um, overall, really cool camera. Glad I stumbled upon this. Excited to get this serviced hopefully get the finder fixed and shoot a lot more with this. And I'll definitely uh, do like a more thorough in-depth review six months down the road once I've shot with this a whole bunch and get a better feel for it. But I uh, hope you enjoyed this introduction to the RITREC review and this kind of rare camera that I was quite excited to come across. Uh, anyways, if you've shot with one of these, I would love to hear about it. Like I said, up until I found this, I knew nothing about it. So just very intriguing to me. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you as always for watching and I will see you again soon with another one.